Following the murder of Barbara Davis Stevens, a 27-year-old mother of two, Cheryl DeFilippi, was attacked on February 27, 1975, in the parking lot of the Miami-Dade Community College South Campus in Miami. A young man had asked her for a ride and then tried to force his way into her car. When she refused, he pulled a knife. She then fled from the car after trying to reason with her attacker for 15 minutes, but he caught her and stabbed her repeatedly. Cheryl was able to escape, got back up, when the man returned and stabbed her again. She was stabbed a total of 17 times and sustained serious injuries to her hand that required multiple surgeries. A 17-year-old, Michael Dragon, was arrested and charged with the attempted murder of Cheryl DeFilippi. He pled guilty to assault with intent to commit murder and was sentenced as an adult to 15 years in prison. Another attack occurred in Miami-Dade Community College, this time in November of 1974. Melanie Inc., a 19-year-old college student, was attacked at the Miami-Dade Community College North Campus. A man cut her on the neck and tried to drag her into his car. She fought her way out but was pursued. Her attacker was eventually pursued by bystanders and arrested. The man, Rene Burrell, age 23, was charged with first-degree attempted murder. He had parked next to Melanie's car and attempted to grab her, putting his hand over her mouth and threatening her with a knife while trying to drag her into his car. He was convicted of first-degree aggravated assault. The father of Barbara Davis Stevens assisted Melanie Inc.'s father when the sentencing of Burrow was delayed in 1975. He was eventually sentenced to five years in prison. A third stabbing occurred at Miami International Airport on July 27, 1975, when Suzanne Lustig, age 29, was stabbed to death in the airport's parking garage shortly after 1 a.m. The garage was only 200 feet from the main terminal and was patrolled by Metro-Dade Sheriff's deputies. She was stabbed numerous times in her back, abdomen, and arm. Her car, a blue Chevrolet Monte Carlo, was stolen and run into an iron railing near the elevator as the driver made his escape from the garage. The car, Gloria's purse, and one of her shoes were later found abandoned off the Palmetto Expressway near 103rd Street. The suspect was described as between 6 feet and 6 feet 1, weighing 170 to 180 pounds. Police believed it was a robbery gone wrong. Gloria had worked as a dental hygienist and had returned to Miami in the fall of 1974 to live with her parents and younger sister in Miami Beach. She was described as a shy, quiet woman who had little social life. Stanley Morgan, also known as Frank Holliday, was convicted and sentenced to life in prison in 1979 for Gloria's murder. A number of other stabbings occurred during this same time. In April 1975, a woman fought back against an attacker who forced her to disrobe at knife point in a remote northwest Dade County wooded area. She grabbed the knife, stabbed her attacker, and ran with her clothes to a nearby road where she flagged down a passing motorist. In February 1975, a 29-year-old woman was stabbed and assaulted at a parking lot of a restaurant in Fort Lauderdale after an attempted sexual assault. In January 1975, Mildred Pepino, age 52, was stabbed more than 50 times at her Fort Lauderdale record store. Her attacker was a white male, 5 feet 9 to 5 feet 11, weighing 175 to 195 pounds. He was believed to be about 25 years old. Thankfully, Mildred survived this terrible attack. Also in February 1975, a 34-year-old woman in Hollywood was stabbed several times during the course of an attempted rape. She had answered her doorbell when a man dressed in a uniform assembling that of a postal worker appeared. He was holding an envelope in his hand, and she assumed that he was a postal carrier. He was described as between 28 to 35 years old, 5 feet 10, with light blonde hair and blue eyes. Whether these stabbings were related to the stabbing murder of Barbara Davis Stevens remains unclear. However, women of South Florida were being attacked 
oftentimes by men with knives. Please join us again for the next episode, when we will discuss the next in the series of murders known as the Flat Tire Murders and also the Canal Murders. Please leave your comments below. Thank you for listening.